I present to you Kalamelios Zephyros. Here you will find a number of testing facilities, as well as the observation hub of Poiton Oikos. Okay. Right then. Let's begin by... Hmm. Oh, it's a Spriggan. Well, well. An Aureus. How delightful. Aureus, Spriggan, same thing. And it's stealing a little mineral, as they do. Look at it go. Ooh. And what, pray tell, is that? Right, Emmett? What is that? Shark man? Ah, that's a new species of shark. We approved the concept but a few days ago. Why would you let a Sharks shark walk are among on land? The most popular sea creatures. Rare is the day when someone does not submit a new concept. <laughs> okay. At first, they were largely orthodox. Consideration given to such things as size and environmental impact. And then a whimsical someone thought to bestow it with flight. Another superior intelligence. And then the floodgates burst. Concepts with multiple heads or arms or legs or arms and legs and so on and so forth. It was getting absurd. A part of me wanted to tell them to go away and find something else to create. But in the end, I couldn't deny their passion. Watch out, dude. Here we are. Watch out, dude. It's hungry. Whoa. Ooh, I need that weapon. That was too close. Are you unharmed? Hi. Well now, if it isn't a pair of familiar faces. You're Heidelin, but... What? Banar, that we should meet you here. Banar. Oh, look at him looking away. Yeah, because they said that um, she gets on his nerves, but he like he likes her. But he doesn't want to show that he likes her, you know? <laughs> yeah, see? It's her. Heidelin. As I mentioned earlier, the better part of the convocation holds that when we retire is when we return to the star. Yes? Well, she is not among said majority. Even after stepping down, she carries on with her work. Well, that's her choice, Emmett. Maybe she doesn't want to die. So she was part of the convocation and she stepped down. So she used to work there and she no longer doesn't. But she used to. Okay. Vinar is her name and she is the previous Azen. Oh, really? Previous Azim. Well. It has been a while, Hithlidaeus. You look well. Less so, Emmet Selk. I dare say the lines <laughs> upon your brow have both deepened and doubled in number. Oh. Oh. Shots fired, Emmet. <laughs> a shame for one so young. You must make an effort to frown less often. Oh, yeah, they like each other. <laughs> Easier said than done, thanks to your unruly successor. Unruly? How is she, if I may ask? Incorrigible as ever. Rushed headlong into a volcano on the brink of eruption just the other day. I should be glad to share the tale in its entirety later. Okay. If you're so inclined. You know I am. Now then, you are? Uh, yeah, that's complicated. <laughs> she has blue eyes, like glowing gl blue sapphire eyes. Say, have you perchance come from the future? 
Whoa, whoa, lady. I can't say it because they might get crazy on me, so let's just keep it between you and me. <laughs> uh, uh, I do not believe we have ever met, yet I sense my magic upon you. Oh, we've met. We've met. Therefore, if I wove the enchantment, I could only have done so at a later point in time. Yeah, like in the future. What manner of magic is this, if I may ask? A traveler's ward, of course. It prevents the corruption of one's ether. That sounds rather like the Blessing of Light. Does it protect you from enthrallment by primals by any chance? Uh, the Blessing of Light. I see you are not ignorant to its presence. And while there are many protective spells, the one you bear is unmistakably mine. Ah. Oh. Hold on. From the future? That's absurd. <laughs> Emmett. Oh, you caught on finally, did you? <laughs> what is it? Are you unable to speak of the matter? Yeah, I can't talk about it. Sorry. I don't want to just tell you guys. The reality to which you must return exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Rules. But yeah, I mean, I can't, you know? I can't talk about it. I'm sorry. So, your actions here will not change your history, but they may yet affect the course of ours. How very exciting! I'm quite fond of delving into the unknown, and there's naught more unknown than the future. <laughs> Until a moment finally arrives, we cannot know for certain what will come to pass, regardless of our supposed foreknowledge. So you needn't worry for us. Oh, okay. More importantly, that you should go to such great lengths as to travel unto the past bespeaks the gravity of your quest. Well, yeah. Will you not reveal it to us? Mayhap we can be of aid to your cause. Oh, gosh. I'm not supposed to. I can't. <sighs> if this is true, then you've been keeping quite the secret to yourself. Well, yes, Emmett, I have to. I mean, I can't let you know what happened to you, and, you know, it's because of me, and poor Hythelodeus over here. Gah. As a representative of the Convocation, I will hear it all. Your identity, purpose, everything. My, well, aren't you just Mr. Need to Know? Oh, just like you, Emmett. Just like you. Uh... Why don't we move to a place more conducive to calm conversation? Yes, please. And tell Emmett I can't tell him, please. Because he doesn't go through the, the best life, you know. I, God, I feel, still feel sorry for him. I've been working here for some days now at an old friend's behest. If it is agreeable, we may make use of my accommodation at Poiton Oikos. Poiton Oikos, okay. Oikos.
we were meant to meet. I am certain of it. I hope so. I hope your knowledge you can help me. Else I wouldn't have marked you so clearly, and sent you unto myself in the past. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> it's precisely the sort of mischief I would get up to. I'm quite inspired, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Wonderful aroma. I feel more relaxed already. The music. Oh, man. Would that I had sweetmeats to offer, but I travel light out of habit. There's plenty of hot water, though, so please have as much tea as you like. Now then, will you tell us your tale? Oh, man. Will I be breaking my rule if I do? Will I be going back to the future, the future that I know, if I tell them? A calamity called the final days has befallen the world. The world has been sundered, broken into shards. Mankind is being forced to flee the star. Well, these are all true, but right now the reason why I'm here is the final days has befallen the world. Why don't you start from the beginning? Oh, Emmett. I'll try. The tea better run cold because that's a long story to tell. Am I telling about him? About Emmett? About how he was there? Yes, this... Yeah, hi, Dylan. That dude, yep. Was it La Habrea? I don't know. The Asians. Yes, you, Emmett. And you. I met... A shadow of you. And you helped me. Yep, Zodiac. Man. Preposterous. Utterly preposterous. Sorry, Emmett. While not the words I would have chosen, I too have my doubts. Much of it borders on the incredulous. <sighs> what of you, Vanar? She knows. Not knowing the precise details of the first final days, it is difficult to determine the veracity of the tale. Supposing it is all true, I must ask myself why I would do what I did. Why would I feel I had no recourse but to oppose the Fourteen and create this Hydaelyn? Circumstances change, of course, but it would not have been an easy decision regardless. No. There must have been a reason. One compelling enough to force me to take such drastic measures. Then there is the Elpis flower, which I said would serve as a guide. Mm -hmm. 
That it's of import to your mission is plain. But your presence here leads me to believe that this place also holds significance. But what could it be? What are we meant to accomplish? Might it not be simply thus? <sighs> In the future, whence she came, the final days could not be averted. Mankind has no choice but to flee the star. By alerting us to that eventuality, perhaps you wish to pave the way for other futures. Theoretically speaking, it is a possibility. I don't want to flee our star, though. I want to stop it. Yet if that were my primary objective, I see no reason to guide our friend to Elpis specifically. The capital on Amarot, or even my own home, would be more logical destinations. Oh, the real capital of Amarot. Oh. True, true. I note also that Heidelin did not specify a point in time to which she must return. By this, it may be inferred that it was not critical that we should meet. Hmm. Alternately, she had reason to believe that our paths would converge, coincidental though it may seem. Hmm. This is quite a puzzle. And we do not have all the pieces. Hardly any. But we do have one immutable fact. If the final days are indeed as described, they will bring death to all that I hold dear. Yeah. Yet despite being afforded long years of preparation, the only provisions I could make were for flight. For flight. Yep, for the moon. Nay, my first and foremost endeavor would be to find a way to forestall the coming doom. That's... Isn't that why Heidelin uh, jailed Zodiark in the moon? Given that even the 14 failed, mayhap you deemed it impossible. Maybe. Nothing is impossible. This I have always believed. And if Heidelin is indeed me, she would believe the same. Listen to yourself. Are you seriously entertaining the notion that you are a messianic figure in some far-fetched tale? Oh, Emmett, I'm sorry. Well, I will not. I refuse to accept that our world could be undone by some unforeseen calamity. I also take offense to my portrayal as a megalomaniacal madman. <laughs> uh, well, you know, a bunch of years and trying to get the source back together to be whole and things just not going as you planned kind of turns a person into a uh, madman. <laughs> to sacrifice oneself for the star is a noble act, and I would hold those who gave themselves to this Zodiac in the highest esteem. Yet, you claim I recreated Amarot and populated it with phantoms of our people? Yeah. A bizarre indulgence that would be insulting to their memory. But you did. Worse still, I even invited you there. Literally invited my own downfall. Why would I do something so idiotic and inexplicable? Only you know. But really, you were thinking that I was going to turn because I was so filled with the light that you invited me there. Not, I don't think he knew about Artbert. No. <clears throat> you did it. Now, 
I will allow that the hypothetical task of restoring our world would be daunting in the extreme. The thought of having to bear such a burden for a thousand, thousand lives horrifies me. Horrifies me too. But I would never forsake my duty. I would never forsake my brethren. You do not know me. I've had my fill of your fiction. I will return to my duty, and you will not bother me again. Emmett Selk! Wait! Oh, I'm sorry, Emmett. You've seen much of Elpis already. If you have any observations to share, I should like to hear them. Dynamis is the key to all of this. Hermes and Metreon are somehow involved. I'm still trying to make sense of it all. It's gotta be Dynamis. The the like the emotional thing right it's got to be it ah yes the energy distinct from ether though not my field i have a basic understanding of dynamis and you say hermes researched the phenomenon in the course of creating meteon yes i believe this warrants further investigation I think so, too. With that settled, it is time for action. Okay. The missing pieces of the puzzle are here, I'm certain of it. And when you find them, the picture my future self has painted will be complete, and you will have your answer. I hope so. Suffice it to say, I will aid you in your quest. Thank you. I need somebody here that knows a little bit of Dynamis. Oh, Emmett. I'm sorry. Have faith. If Emmett Selk is the man Azum described to me, we've not seen the last of him. Good. I'm glad. Shall we begin our investigations, then? I am acquainted with Hermes, of course, but only as a visitor received by the chief overseer of Elpis. Of the man himself, I know only that which is common knowledge. Thus, I suggest we fall back on the tried-and-true method of conversing with the locals. Okay. Well, Emmett's pissed. <laughs> oh no. But if someone came to me from the future and said that, I'd be pretty pissed too. See you.